In this video, we're going to look at the granular synthesis mode here. Now, in this case, I'm not going to use the initialized waveform. I'm going to use an actual sound source. And I'm going to open the sound source browser here. And these work nicely with longer phrases. And there's an entire new category in the Omnisphere 2.0 library of phrases here. So let me just load one in. We'll just choose one at random. And there it's loading in. And we can hear it right now. Nothing is turned on, so we'll hear it as it is. And I can trigger it on different notes. So let's go into the granular synthesis zoom and we'll turn it on. Now, basically what this does is it breaks apart audio into little fragments that are called grains. And it's good for generating long evolving sounds by manipulating the grains. Now, each grain can have its own duration and amplitude and envelope and pitch. And we can have up to eight granular voices available per layer like this. Now, one little footnote here, we have a legacy button, which will revert back to the Omnisphere 1.0 style granular synthesis engine. And when this is off, we're working in the new 2.0 mode, which is what we're going to look at now. So to start with, let's hear it again as is. And with granular at the default settings. Now, there's two broad modes of operation that we can work in here, and that pertains to these over here, speed and position. Now, when we're in speed mode, which we're in now, the speed at which the grains progress through the sample, remember, this is a long sample of a long phrase, and we're breaking it up into tiny little grains, so it progresses through the sample. The speed parameter determines the speed at which it progresses through, and the farther to the right it is, the slower it is. And all the way to the left, we'll hear it quicker. We're there through the whole phrase already at that point. Whereas here, it'll take a lot longer. Now, the position mode selects which portion of the sample is going to be broken up into grains. And this goes through the length of the whole phrase. Now, if I put it all the way here, we'll hear the attack of that first note. Whereas here, we'll hear just the tail of the end. And what's great is this can be modulated using an LFO or any of the modulation sources. So it's fun to do that. Now, grain depth over here means that when we move the slider to the right, we're going to increase the number of grains that are created from the sound source. So all the way to the left, we're going to barely be breaking it apart. So it's in position, and it's just looping that little section over and over. But let's break it apart a bit. So you generally don't need a whole lot on this slider to get it going. Now, when the intensity slider is low like this, the grains are longer and there's a slower transition to the next grain. It's very smooth sounding. And as we move it higher, the grains are shorter and the transitions are more quick. So we hear more of abrupt buzzing between the grains. And the smoothing control acts kind of like a crossfade. Since the grains vary in pitch and in volume, the changes between the grains can be abrupt and jarring like it is when this is up with no smoothing. So this sort of smooths out and crossfades between the grains. Now the spread control is like a pan control. It widens the grains and spreads them across the stereo field. So all the way here is normal and kind of mono right up the center. So here the grains are panned and we got a bigger stereo image. And detuning basically varies the pitch heard in the grain. So the higher we have this, the more detuned the grains will be. I'm going to leave it low and we can then work with all these pitch controls, which are interrelated and it refers to the pitch of the grains. Now the slider here sets how often the grains are going to be transposed. So the higher up we have it, the more they're going to be transposed. And the interval determines, up to an octave, the interval that they're going to be transposed. So 
So there, we're going up eight semitones, and we can determine how often they're going to be transposed here. Now the gliding determines how often the grains will glide between the note that's played and the transposed pitch grain. So when it's down low, we're going to hear more abrupt transitions more often. Rather than smoothing them out with the gliding control. And the direction basically determines which direction the pitch grains are transposed in. We have up, down, or up, and down, and up, or down. So we can hear them going down there. Now, the range control is interesting. We have normal and wild mode, and I like wild mode. It creates more dramatic results when the detuning and the pitch grains are above their low values. So it's lots of fun to experiment with these controls and to modulate these parameters. So for example, let's say I want to modulate this. I'm going to switch to position. I'm going to right click. And instead of using an LFO, I'm going to use aftertouch. I'm going to go under all sources and I'm going to assign aftertouch, meaning how hard I press on the keys on the keyboard. And we can see a representation of it here with this slider. So it'll modulate the parameter based on the starting position where this is at. And of course, it'll work differently depending where this is in the slider. And here's the original sample again. So this is really great for breaking apart phrases and creating long, evolving type textures. See you for more in the next video.